What I want to talk about on today's call is the state of marketing, the power of focus, Facebook advertising, the best three sales questions, video marketing, the importance of faces. This call is being recorded. Today's call is actually about eight ideas that will ensure you hit your sales quota over the summer. Every business has an issue with seasonality. Like a lot of people get slow in the holiday season. A lot of companies, that's their busy season. A lot of companies get slow in the summer. For some companies, that's their busy season. Some companies are really busy in the summer, but then they slow down when all the kids go back to school in the fall. So no matter what kind of business you're in, no matter what you sell, there are going to be struggles with seasonality. And when it's seasonal, when things are slower, that actually is a huge opportunity because you have more time than ever to try new and different things. When you're slammed, like if you're in the kitchen at a restaurant and you're slammed, you're not going to be trying a new dish. You just got to make the stuff you can crank out quickly. But when it's slower and the, and the lunch rush is over, you can kind of go try to make a different sandwich than you've ever made before. You just can't do that when it's busy. So I'm going to go through eight ideas that we can use that can help us hit our quota this summer. And these are things that I normally wouldn't always ask of you. If it was slammed and you had demos all day, every day, and it wasn't the slow season, you wouldn't even be able to do the stuff on this list. But because it's slow, I want you to think of that as an opportunity. So I'm going to go through these eight for you guys. Number one is you need to sharpen your skills. You need to sharpen your acts. Like when it's slower, that's when you should be listening to podcasts about selling. You should be reading the challenger sale. You should be reading sold or be sold. You should be reading the greatest salesman that ever lived. You should be reading the art of the sale. You should be role playing with each other. You should be looking at your scripts and fine tuning those. You should be becoming an expert on the industry you're in and reading more articles about what we sell, marketing solutions, and the industry we're in, small business and real estate. There's a great quote, you guys, from, from Abraham Lincoln, which is that if I had an hour to chop down a tree, I would spend the first 55 minutes sharpening my axe. So one of the eight things you can do in the summer to make more money is to sharpen your skills. There's actually a company called Y Combinator, and they put a bunch of startups through an incubator. And what they ask them to do, I think, is relevant to this topic, which is, can you get 10% better per week at sales? Because if you could get 10% better a week at sales, you would be 100% better by the end of the summer you would be 300% better by the end of the year. But that would be by only improving by 10% per week. When it's slower, you should improve by more than 10%. More podcasts, more books, more webinars, more learning. Number two, think about adding some new technology. Like I, I know that adding Chorus, Chorus.ai has been a game changer for us. The ability to listen to the calls by keyword, to analyze the talk time of Jeremy or, or Darren versus the lead that they're speaking to and to figure out what the ideal number of talk time is on a deal that closes, that's been huge for us. Like one of the things that you normally can't do with our technology when you're busy is you can't set up a website for someone. You can't put their picture and their city and their bio and their blog post because it normally takes too long. But if you're in the summer and it's a little slower, like go above and beyond, build them a whole custom theme and send it over to them. You've got the time. The other thing is the proposal. When we send a proposal, how can we make that better over the summer? We just invested in BombBomb so that we can send video messages post demo. How can we use the video messages more effectively? There's actually a, te a technology, Sarah, that I want you to look at. It's called SalesHood. Saleshood is a better training platform for salespeople. There's another technology called a dialer. And, and a dialer allows you to upload a ton of phone numbers and it'll call three at once or five at once. That is the most popular technology in inside sales right now is, is these auto dialers. So maybe during the summer, we could look into adding one of those like Mojo, which already integrates with Follow Up Boss. Number three, 
voicemails as a strategy. Normally, I don't ask you guys to leave a lot of voicemails. We have our technique. If we call and they don't answer, we double dial and call back immediately. If they don't answer that, we leave a text. If they don't answer any of that, then we do a voicemail. But I believe voicemails can be something that help you. It's just that when you're busy, you don't need to leave a bunch of them. But what is the best short custom voicemail you can leave? I actually read some stats where voicemails over 20 seconds don't even hardly get listened to. You want to have a short, upbeat, custom voicemail. Use their name. Use their website name. Use their Facebook page name. Whatever it may be. And make it intriguing. Like, it doesn't need to just be like, hey, this is Jeremy. I'm calling from Curator. Hopefully, you can give me a call back today. Like, I would call and be like, hey, this is Jeremy. I'm calling from Curator. I was on your website, and your blog is screwed up, man. There's like five things you need to do to your blog by the end of today. Now, I'm, I'm going a little above there. I'm like kind of hy hyping it up for the example. But like, hey, this is Darren. I'm calling from Curator. I saw a couple of your Facebook posts that didn't get any leads. And, and there's one thing you could have changed that would have got leads. Give me a call back when you have a minute. Like, I, I think that there has to be some intrigue. Why should I call you back? And if you think the reason I'm going to call you back is because you left a voicemail, you're living in the wrong decade. Number four, write better emails. Send more emails. Normally, we do 95% of the marketing for you guys. We send out emails galore. We drip on people. We blast people. We identify the people most likely to buy, invite them to webinars for you. But we saw a great example last week of Jeremy taking some initiative and, and writing a better email. His email was like, hey, I've got an email template that if you send to your database, you're going to go on coffee meetings for a month with the people that matter the most to you. Would you mind if I sent that over? Like that email was getting more than a 50% reply rate. And it was because it was creative. He actually asked the marketing team to help him write it so that it was well written. And now that we have curator brain, now that we have tens of thousands of ads, thousands of emails that are all proven, that are all based on data, you guys should be sending emails to your leads asking if they want to see that. Hey, we have an ad that just got a thousand link clicks for one cent per click. Would you mind if I shared that with you? Guys, the pull email, don't just push your emails out to them, make them reply. Conversations create closings. If I went into my inbox right now and I got an email that said, Hey, Chris, we ran seven ads last week and our cost per lead was under five bucks. Would you like to see those ads? What am I going to say? Send them. Please send them. That's called a pull technique versus a push technique. Pull it out of the lead that they want what you have. Don't just push it over to them. So more and better emails. And then when you know that Jeremy sent one that crushed it or Neil sent one that crushed it, sharing those across the channel. The other thing, number five, guys, is actually putting more of a focus on referrals and upsells. When you're bringing on a brand new client, your marketing and your sales can be impacted big time by seasonality. But when you are trying to upsell or when you are trying to get a referral, upgrades and referrals are actually not seasonally impacted. If your best business colleague says you need to go check this out, you don't care if it's July or February. Referrals are not nearly as impacted on seasonality and neither are upgrades. Like if you're already a curator client, you've got to pay your bill in July anyway. You guys should be focusing in the summer on calling your best past clients and getting referrals and calling your best past clients to pitch them an upgrade because you would be amazed like, Normally, when you're calling your leads, you talk to a ton of them because we have great inbound leads. Well, when you are slower in the summer, you can call your sphere instead of calling your database. Call the people that already bought and sell them more. Call the people that already bought that are happy and try to upsell them. And then go above and beyond. Like 
If I was you guys, I would be asking Sarah, hey, Sarah, can you send me a list of all the clients who gave us a 10 out of 10 on our net promoter score survey? Because that way I would call all the people that I already sold that are happy right now. So that's another thing you could do on the summer. How about a handwritten note that just thanks them for the fact that they signed up and the fact that they send you business occasionally? Like those are the things I normally would never be like, Neil, why haven't you written any handwritten notes this month? But in the summer, I'm going to ask why you haven't because it's slower. Another great example. Number six, better promotions and discounts. Like Black Friday, it works. Cyber Monday, it works. People respond to discounts and promotions. We actually just came up with the biggest, coolest, most expensive promo we've ever done with the videographer coming to where you live and work and filming videos for you, taking new headshots for you, coming up with B-roll of your city for you. That's a big promo. That's an expensive promo. And the reason we did it is because we know we have to go above and beyond in the summer. So as a sales manager, as an owner of a company, I would be coming and saying, hey guys, I, I know it's a little slower in the summer. I've got a lady, she's pretty close. I think if we gave her this extra discount, I think if we gave her three promos, not one, she would sign up. Well, I'm going to be a lot more interested in helping in, in saying yes to that extra promo or that extra deal in the summer when it's slow. I'm the owner. I'm the manager. I want to hit my goals too. So I'm going to be much more inclined to be lenient on promos and discounts in the summer than I'm going to be in the fall and the spring. A great example of this is Darren actually came to me last week. He's like, hey, Chris, I know we're doing the videographer upgrade for new clients. What if a current client upgrades to marketer? If a current client upgrades to marketer, could I offer that too? I hadn't even thought of that idea. And as soon as he told me, I'm like, of course you can. That's a no brainer. We should definitely offer that promo to the people that have already been paying us for a year. If we're going to offer it to the new people. Now, I'll, be, I'll keep it real with you. I have a text message right here from Darren. This is from about 30 minutes ago. He said, hey, Chris, I've got a referral. They want a three-month contract. I said, no, our contracts are six months. But I love that Darren's asking, like, because it's the summer and we're slow and we'll sign off on more. Think about that, guys. Number seven, working weekends and evenings. Now, I know that you guys all just cringed a little bit inside, but let me explain what I mean. Because number one, at Curator, we think overtime is overrated. And we think that you can absolutely crush your quota Monday through Friday, nine to five. But in the summer, it's different. People have a different schedule. So what I would do is, and, and it's so cool, in my opinion, of course, that you work at a company that'll let you do this. I would take Monday and Tuesday off next week, and I would work on Saturday and Sunday. So I'm not saying add weekends. I'm saying try weekends. People that answer the phone on the weekend are different than the people that answer their phone during the week. Try evenings. Come in and work from noon to eight tomorrow instead of nine to five. Like if you'll vary your schedule, you'll vary the people that you contact. So I'm a huge fan of this. We obviously are ne never forcing you to work nights and weekends, but instead of working Wednesday, Thursday, or Thursday, Friday, try a Sunday. I instead of always working nine to five, try working 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. one day and just see what happens. And I will guarantee you're going to tap into a lot of business that you would have never gotten unless you tried this. Number eight, last tip cold slash focused outreach. And I have cold in quotation marks because we don't generate any cold leads. But what I mean by that is who are the leads that you never reach out to or who are the leads that aren't a lead? Like if I went on LinkedIn and I looked up Junie Weiniger, one of our best clients, or if I went on LinkedIn and I looked up Lisa Archer, who are her connections on LinkedIn that work in markets were available? 
Because if I can call someone and say, hey, I wanted to reach out to you. I noticed that uh, you're connected to link uh, uh, to Lisa Archer on LinkedIn. Lisa's actually one of our best clients at Curator. And I'd love to show you what we're doing for her marketing and sales efforts. Like you can do cold outreach. Like you can do a Google search. Like if you go to Google and type best realtor in, and then you put in the name of a city we're available, you're going to have the number one organic result. Like it, who is the number one realtor in Google search rankings for an awesome term? Because that means they're, they love technology. How about this? Who's paying for ads? When so, if somebody searches homes for sale in Austin, if there's a paid ad on the top or the side, don't you think that a, a realtor who's willing to pay when someone searches homes for sale in Austin might be a realtor who might want to hear about what we do? Because what's the whole purpose of that ad they're running on Google? to get more leads, to get more buyer leads. We know how to get people tons of buyer leads. So whether it's doing a Google search, tapping into LinkedIn, going on Zillow or Realtor.com, like, again, this is not the stuff that I normally would ask you guys to do. But if you want to hit your sales quota this summer, if you want to actually crush your quota when it's slow, you have to do these things. The inches you need to quote Al Pacino, are everywhere around you. Go take advantage of them. That's how you hit your quota in the summer when it's slow. Hey, this is Chris. Thanks for listening to my call. If you enjoyed the call, please subscribe right now. Also share the episode and use the hashtag calls with Chris. Every week, I choose a few people randomly to win a free signed copy of The Conversion Code, my USA Today best-selling book. You can also visit curator.com, that's C-U-R-A-Y-T-O-R.com to learn more about my company, which is the one I'm running during these calls. We help small businesses grow faster, and we've been featured recently by Inc., Forbes, Fortune, and Entrepreneur Magazine.